chapter 17. Um, we have the territory for the half tribe of Manasseh uh, that we get here. And again, this is west of the Jordan. And notice most of the Jordan River on the western side uh, is Manasseh's territory. So this would be the area where John was baptizing. Uh, would have been what was originally part of Manasseh. Then one of the things that uh, that happens here, verse number three. But the, the, I'm going to just call this fellow Z because I have a hard time pronouncing his name. But Z, the son of Hefer, son of Gilead, son of Makur, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters. And these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milcah, and Tirza. And they came near before Eleazar the priest, before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the ruler, saying, the Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among their father's brothers. Ten shares fell to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side of the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. So what we have here, uh, these daughters, uh, this was brought up in Numbers chapter 36, where there's a problem. As the land was being given to these families, uh, the land was to stay in that family. Uh, this was a permanent inheritance. And the way inheritance laws work is it goes through the sons. We see in Numbers chapter 36, uh, this family, there's no sons, only daughters. So in Numbers 36, he goes to Moses and, hey, we've got a problem here. Because this land that is mine, when it gets uh, split up, the next time of the Jubilee, when uh, the land which is every 50 years, the land goes back to the original owners, uh, that my land has will have nobody because my grandchildren will inherit land from their father's side. So there's a problem there. So uh, Numbers chapter 36, uh, there's provision made for that. Uh that these women were allowed to inherit land. Uh, so that's being brought out here as the land's being uh, being divided. Then we have, uh, again, here in uh, Joshua chapter 17, uh, verses 12 and 13. Yet the children of Manasseh could not drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites were determined to dwell in that land. And it happened when the children of Israel grew strong, they put the Canaanites to forced labor, but did not utterly drive them out. Uh, so there's a problem again. Um, you know, a few times we've seen this, they put them to forced labor. Uh, but that's not what God commanded. He commanded them uh, to utterly destroy. Uh, and, and it's amazing to me the number of times we see people in the Old Testament not following the commands that God laid forth. He said utterly destroy. Well, let's keep them as captives. Do we see that happen today? Sadly, far too often, we see that happen. Uh, that we'll obey most of what Scripture says. 
you know, last time we were together, we talked about Matthew 18 and, and the process of your brother's sins. And if you need to take it before the church, you take it before the church. There's some congregations that will not do that. Uh, here in the States, uh, that is far, far too common. Uh, a brother that I know from, from years gone by, uh, he's since passed away. He wrote a book called The Forgotten Commandment. And it was dealing with how do you deal with an erring brother? Just like the scripture says. Yet we have so many people, uh, sadly, even some elders in the Lord's church, who don't want to do what scripture says to do. Uh, and, and don't want to obey all the commandments. Just the ones that, uh, that they agree with, the ones that seem uh nice to them to do uh, so there's definitely as as we look at this again let's make personal application here and think about this um uh, and, and not just be uh say oh they they should have done better let us learn these lessons let us determine within ourselves that we are not going to allow this to happen to us today we are not going to fall into these same traps. Uh, these things were written for our learning uh, that we might learn from them and not repeat these mistakes. Uh, brother, uh, yes, sir. Before you, before you continue, uh, I was going to mention uh, Manasseh also here. I think he strayed also at some time. If I'm right, uh, Manasseh. Mm -hmm. uh, what about, what, what wasn't, about he, wasn't he wicked at some stage also? Uh, Is that the same as I'm referring to? Uh, that repented he was wicked at some stage. That was a, a king by the name of Manasseh. Oh, oh okay. And um, occasionally what we see as well uh as you're reading through some of the prophets, uh, just like uh, when we're talking about the people of the land, rather than listing all of them out every time, sometimes it'll call them just the Canaanites or, or the Hittites as a term for all the people who are there. Uh, we see that sometimes in the, in the prophets as well, that it may refer to um, like the northern tribes as Ephraim which would be all of the northern tribes. Uh, but Ephraim is is used um, as a part on behalf of the whole. Uh, and that's, that's something that's done uh, quite a bit uh, as we see that. Just like we, when we talked a minute ago about Judah, uh, it was actually Judah, Benjamin, and a bunch of the Levites. Uh, but we call it Judah. Uh, for for convenience sake and that's you know scripture does that uh perfectly an acceptable thing to do so manasseh uh the tribe we get to verses 14 through 16 uh and we have uh a complaint by them the children of joseph spoke to joshua saying why have you been giving us why have you given us only one lot uh and one share to inherit, since we are a great people, inasmuch as the Lord has blessed us until now. We deserve more. So Joshua answered them, If you are a great people, then go up to the forest country and clear a place for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and the giants, since the mountains of Ephraim are too confined for you. But the children of Joseph said, The mountain country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron both those who are of Beth Sheen and its towns and those who are of the valley of Jezreel. And Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, You are a great people and have great power. You shall not only have, not have only one lot, but the mountain country shall be yours. Although it is wooded, you shall cut it down, and its farthest extent shall be yours. 
for you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have iron chariots and are strong. So they're complaining uh, that they don't have enough, uh, enough land. They need more. And realize the way the land was being divided up, who was making the decisions? Well, that was God. Uh, back at the beginning of verse 14. He's making uh, making the provision where they're going to be. Uh, and we can see as we look at the map, Manasseh's got quite a bit of territory. Now, granted, there's a lot of it that is uh, fairly rugged. Uh, but there by Megiddo, that's that's the, um, the Valley of Jezreel, uh, which is great, great territory. I mean, it became the... Uh, the place of a lot of battles, uh, but that's good, good uh, land that's through there. And in a way, Manasseh uh, here was arguing against themselves. Yes, we are so big. Yes, oh, we need more. Well, if you're so big, you can take more. Drive these people out. Cut down the forests that are in your way and plant your crops. Uh, what Manasseh was trying to do here was take a shortcut. Give us more. Give us better uh, than everybody else. And the land they got was rather choice land. Uh, and that was... Uh, more than enough provision for them. And as we look at verses 17 and 18, uh, you got work to do. Drive these people out. Uh, you have the strength. You have the power. You can do this um, if you're willing to be faithful to the Lord. And then we see uh, as we're going to get back on Thursday, we have this continuing on uh, with all the different uh, tribes through the end of chapter 19. Um, and we see, again, this the same pattern again and again and again uh, that is uh, repeated for us. So what I'd like for us to do... Uh, as, as we uh, prepare for uh, Thursday, chapter 20, the cities of refuge, uh, and 21, the, the cities of the Levites. Um, read through those two chapters. That's good information. And uh, if you will, Look with me at the end of chapter 21. We have this great summary uh, up until this point in the in the uh, in the book. Chapter 21, starting in verse 43. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land of which he had sworn to give to their fathers, and they took possession of it and dwelt in it. The Lord gave them rest all around according to all that he had sworn to their fathers, and not a man of all their enemies stood against them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. Not a word failed of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. So what we have here is the fulfillment of God's promise to them. So, okay, I have done everything I promised to do. It's been fulfilled. We realize that the people didn't drive out everybody from the land. Whose fault was that? wasn't God's. It was theirs. 
Yes, indeed, they took the took the main cities, but they didn't do the mop up work. But God completed everything he said he was going to do. All came to pass. And, and this, verses 43 through 45, uh, if you're one that likes to highlight your Bible and, and uh, make note of things, that promise that God made to Abram, Back in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 through 3. Here in Joshua 21, we're seeing that has been fulfilled. The land promise has been completed. Verse 45 lays it out very clearly. And there's some application we get from that even today. You know, there's some people who... Uh, uh, who say, well, Israel is perpetually guaranteed by God to occupy this land, even today. And not getting into the politics of today, but God's promise to them was fulfilled. Joshua 21 43 through 45. God promised and he fulfilled his promise. Now, what's happened with it since? Whether or not they get to keep the land was de dependent upon their faithfulness. We see the northern tribes carried away by Assyria, 722 BC. We see Judah taken into captivity by the Babylonians, 586 BC lasted for 70 years. They came back in 516, dwelt there, A.D. 70. The Romans destroyed them and took them out of the land completely. So it was no longer uh, Israel who was there. You know, what we have going on today is what's happened since, I believe, 1949, when the, the state of Israel was created, um, that we had so many different nations that uh, uh, were in control of that land. Is that God's, uh, is it their God-given right to possess that land? Not anymore. No. Not anymore. Not anymore. Uh, and and Please see, I'm, I'm not that I'm against Israel being there. I mean, they have been through a whole lot here uh, in the last century, persecuted and uh, and abused. Uh, that the people need to be somewhere, uh, but this is not a God given right they have to that territory. But that does not mean that people should blow them up. Uh, any thoughts, comments, questions before uh, before we close up for the evening? And I think, uh, uh, Brother Mark, most people are deceived by that. They have the wrong perception. And what you just said is uh, correct. Um, they didn't keep their bar end of the bargain, uh, to put it that way. And uh, to pay the consequences for that. Absolutely. And Jesus, uh, the end of uh, Matthew chapter 23, uh, says, hey, this is going to be taken from you. Uh, and, and part of the reason that people want to uh, want Israel to have that land today uh, goes back to this doctrine of uh, what's uh, sometimes been called dispensational premillennialism. The idea that Jesus is coming back to literally reign on a literal throne in literal Jerusalem uh, for a literal thousand years. Uh, again, that is uh, all figurative. Uh, and they take passages from all over scripture out of context 
uh, to come up with that doctrine. There is, there is nothing in Scripture that says a thing about Jesus setting foot on this planet ever again. Uh, in fact, uh, it says we're going to meet the Lord in the air and forever be with him uh, when he comes again. But well, this Peter, pre millennial idea... Peter, Peter says that the whole world is going to melt. Mm -hmm. Burnt up. This place is going to be burnt up. Melt, and elements will melt with a fervent heat. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, a lot of that um, misunderstanding about Israel today, uh, again, Joshua 21, 43 through 45, that promise was fulfilled, past tense. Uh, and they no longer had uh, had a right to the land when they failed to obey. And we see it being taken away uh, in parts over time. Any other thoughts, comments, or questions? Okay. Well, I hope and pray this has been uh, uh, useful to you. And uh, I know as we get into this, there's a whole lot of repetition that we have in this section. Uh, I think it's going to get a little bit more exciting. Uh, we have here coming up in the in the following chapters uh, uh, interesting uh, developments that occur, uh, and we see some of the some of the lessons that people learned and they, and they learned them well uh, and, and they're to be commended uh, as we go here. But before we close up, let's uh, go to our heavenly father in a word of prayer. Our God and father in heaven above, we thank you so much for the time we've had together. Father, we pray that you would uh, bless our time in your word. Father, we pray that uh, we would meditate on these things and, make application to our lives. Father, we pray for uh, patience and perseverance as we strive to be your people, oftentimes in discouraging situations. Father, we pray that we would not lose courage, we would not lose strength, uh, but that we would be an example to those around us, to encourage them, to inspire them, uh, to Help them to do bigger and better things as they serve you. Father, we pray for complete faithfulness in our own lives. Father, where we've fallen short, we pray that you would show us those shortcomings and encourage us, encourage us to continue. Father, we pray that you'd be with your church throughout the world, that we may truly completely obey, restore the church uh, that you've laid forth in your word uh, in the world around us today. Father, we pray that uh, those efforts would be complete. Bring us back to exactly what you would have us to do. Father, be with us as we depart. Keep us safe. Return us again Thursday uh, for more time in your word. Bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you, brother.